The glory of Lebanon is given to her, the beauty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the splendor of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Uh, that is a very rich word, Carmel, Kerem El, vineyard or garden of God. <clears throat> so lots of people in this area, Temecula, Tehachapi, Santa Barbara, Lots of vineyards, uh, gardens, lots of people have gardens. <clears throat> the challenge is to make it a garden or a vineyard of God. <clears throat> Let us acknowledge our sins and self-reliance, not trusting in the Blessed Virgin Mary and her help, and asking her for help. So prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. That we may let Mary bring us to Jesus. All gracious God, may the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother and Queen of Carmel, protect us and bring us to your holy mountain, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. So in this first reading from the Book of Kings, it's a reminder not to judge rashly little things, little beginnings, <clears throat> and to just trust the word of the Lord. 
A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel and bowed down to the earth, putting his face between his knees. Now go up, he told his servant, and look out to the sea. He went up and looked. There is nothing at all, he said. Go back seven times, Elijah said. The seventh time, the servant said, Now there is a cloud, small as a man's hand, rising from the sea. Elijah said, Go and say to Ahab, Harness the chariot and go down before the rain stops you. And with that, the the sky grew dark with cloud and storm, and rain fell in torrents. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. When the appointed time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born a subject of the law, to redeem the subjects of the law and to enable us to be adopted as sons. The proof that you are sons is that God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit that cries, Abba, Father. And it is this that makes you a son. You are not a slave anymore. And if God has made you a son, then he has made you heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So if you close your eyes and kind of look over the day interiorly, um, <clears throat> probably more than one time that the cross was there and that you were under the cross, did you notice Mary there with you and Jesus and the Spirit? It says he bowed his head and handed over the spirit right there from a Roman cross. And, and the Father, the love of the Father, God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Son lifted up, and God the Father loving us so much that he doesn't hold back his Son. So, again, I hope you're not looking at me because I'm, I'm trying to go over my own day too here. And, the, you know, there's, we can practically, you know, we can't count on joy, although we, although that's a lie right there. You can hear me saying that. I hope, I hope, I hope that didn't feel right to you when I, you heard me just say that. You can't count on joy. Who says? If you're a beloved son or daughter of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you can't count on some kind of joy every day, peace in Jesus, then there's something wrong. Then we're in that whole thing again of like, you know, I mean, okay, if I just do this or do that, then maybe Jesus will take notice of me and Mary, you'll help me too. That's working for his love. <clears throat> so that's why the gospel that you hopefully prepared for today because you, you know, you didn't know that you were going to come into a mass on Saturday evening and it'd be a uh, not be the 16th Sunday of ordinary time because we're a Carmelite church and so we celebrate July 16th, the feast of the solemnity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. But you probably prepared Luke chapter 10. And if you did, and I hope you did, because that's an easy way to get more out of the Mass because you're putting in a little bit more the night before, the morning of, you know, you read the Gospel. When you come to Mass, you already know how it's going to move, basically. You don't even have to look at the missalette because you read it yourself. And even if you only, you know, even if, you know, God forbid that we have hearing problems, but, but you're really listening. I'm listening too, as I'm, as I'm proclaiming it. And, uh, and then I catch a word or a phrase, and even just one word out of a whole paragraph that, that I've really been listening and I, and I hear that, I can take that with me the whole week. And Jesus is just speaking to me and Mary. St. Joseph through that. So the gospel was um, Martha, who was busy with the serving, said as she sees her sister sitting in front of Jesus at his feet, seemingly doing nothing, she says, Lord, can't you tell my sister to help me? And the, it says, the Lord said to Martha, it doesn't just say Jesus, 
So there's extra weight to this now. This is the Lord God talking to his beloved creature, Martha, not just Jesus of Nazareth. And, you know, Martha and Mary, I mean, maybe, maybe probably their heart, their, the, the core of them has some sense that this is their creator and redeemer here. Jesus, but he hasn't, like, they don't know what you know and I know, that that's Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity there in their home. They know it's Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, so then the Lord says to Martha, 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 you're upset and anxious about a lot of things. Only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good thing, and it won't be taken from her. If you want to put a smile on the Blessed Virgin Mary's face tonight, this week, go home, go to Luke, the end of chapter 10, it's right there, this little paragraph about Martha and Mary and Jesus coming to their home, and cross out the word, she's chosen the better thing, because that's not what St. Luke, what Jesus said or St. Luke wrote. It's not the comparative. Greek has the base, adjective, the comparative, and the superlative, just like Latin, just like other languages. And the comparative is not what's written there in the Greek. It's the base adjective. She's chosen ten agathen, ten agathin, the good thing. That makes a world of difference. And you won't know the Blessed Virgin Mary's heart very well if you keep hearing better and comparisons because comparisons is what Martha's doing, and it's leading her to plenty of stress. And Jesus is trying to heal her from that, not make it worse by continuing the dynamic of comparing and saying, well, you know, it's because you, you know, I mean, she's doing a better thing than you are. Everybody comes to Martha's defense, says, are you kidding me? I'm up to here with my housework or with work at the office, and then somebody else just sits there and watches me work practically and does nothing about it when they could be helping me. Well, yes, in many situations that, you know, but we have to, you know, now does that improve? You know, the person's not moving. So, so am I making it better for myself by voicing my lament and saying, look at that person over there? being lazy, uh, insensitive, we could be working together here. No, it's like clueless. Does that make it better? No, it makes it worse. Because now on top of my extra work that I've got to do, I've got this thing going on in my head now about how somebody else is dropping the ball. <clears throat> and then so Jesus says to that, look, she's doing a good thing. What's the good thing? A guest comes in, not just any old guest, it's, you know, the Lord says, well, it's the Lord, it's me, Jesus. Isn't that a good thing to sit at my feet? They go together, and maybe in, a, you know, in 20 minutes, you could be doing the same thing, and maybe you trade places, and then she'll do some work in the kitchen, you'll be here, and I can tell you some stories about what happened today. Who, who says that, that you know, but just right now, can you just, just be patient a little bit longer, do your part, and trust that the other people are responding to my call also. Everybody's, and if everybody does their part, we all work together, then it will be a beautiful family atmosphere. And, and it's very important to notice that because sitting at the feet of another person, even a regular human being, is considered you know, okay, come on, okay, we get, we've spent enough time here now, we've got some work to do. <clears throat> it's not a very utilitarian thing. You can't measure it very well. But that's how real deep relationships grow, right? By seemingly wasting time with one another, just listening, telling a story, responding to the other person back and forth. Well, it's no different with the Lord, even more important. And if we don't do that, there's no way you and I are going to survive under the Roman cross because we're going to be working for his love instead of from his love that we receive when we sit at his feet, you know, an extra prayer, start the morning off, even if it's just for five or ten minutes, instead of going straight to the coffee pot, straight to, you know, whatever needs, however I start my day, what about just starting with 
five or 10 minutes, just sitting there in your favorite prayer position, whatever it is, on your knees or in your favorite prayer chair and just listening. Lord, what do you have ready for, for us to do this day? Us, you and I together. How, how do you want this day to go? And then with, filled up from that, that uh, intimacy into me see with, with Jesus, then we move out into the day and it becomes an adventure. And even when it becomes horrifically, uh, you know, starts getting, seeming just out of control, but we have a much better chance of hearing and looking for Jesus' presence right there and referring to him instead of trying to solve it ourselves. Now, if you, if you think you can handle a Roman cross on your own, God bless you, because you're gonna need it. I remember one time thinking when I was filled up with the Holy Spirit and you know, prayed up and, and uh, really the love of Jesus was just overflowing, and I was thought, you know, Roman crucifixion is doable. Yeah, but that was... <laughs> now, looking back, I remember, I, 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 I think, I'm, I must have been out of my mind. I mean, even with him, I mean, he's saying, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? If the God man's saying that, it's going to be, you know, if I'm not really, really rooted in his love for me, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deny him. But we'll you know, be like little kids and let him take care of that. As long as we do our part. Serve him, like Martha, but hopefully without all the extra stress of comparing ourselves and looking over our shoulder and trusting that there's this other part of us. You can, you can take it as a, as a uh, you know, you can take it as a, I mean, these were three different people back then, but I think the reason why the Holy Spirit inspired um, Luke to remember that little quaint, seeming very ordinary scene in a house, just like today, is because it says volumes about the church. Church is full of servants, serving deacons. The, word's de the word is deacon for what Mar Martha's doing. Mary was busy with deaconing, hint, hint, you know, like all the priests, all, the, all this doing work, preaching, teaching. Yeah, and John the Cross says, and without Mary sitting at the Lord's feet, without that deep receiving love, it's all like a noisy gong, clanging cymbal. So, especially us men and bishops, priests, deacons, you know, how, how much we need to take that to heart, let alone you know, everybody else, and not just keep promoting that, that doing workaholic uh, uh, approach to, to the Christian life and hoping that God will love us back if we just do our part. No, he already loves you by your baptism. Did you thank him for your baptism today? Next time you start getting tempted to complain to him about something, try this first. In your name, Lord Jesus, I reject you, Satan, and all your works and all your empty show, and all your performing, uh, lies, and I announce you, God the Father, Jesus Christ, you, Holy Spirit, you, the Catholic Church, that I'm already your beloved son or daughter that will never be taken away unless I throw it away. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Heavenly Father. Come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Teach us how to sit at the feet of Jesus and receive and then give it to others. And right now, Jesus, you know, just as you spoke to Martha and Mary 2,000 years ago, please speak to each person here in this church right now. You love us right where we're at and you love us too much to leave us there. So. What do you want to say in the middle of our stress, anger, resentment, fear, 
confusion about our, our mission, sense of being abandoned, rejected. Speak to us again what you said at our baptism, Heavenly Father. This is my beloved son, daughter, in whom I am well pleased. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now pour out our hearts in prayer to our Heavenly Father, trusting in his love for us already, and through Jesus in the Spirit, pray for the Church and the whole world. And let our response be, through Mary, Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for the Church, for Pope Francis, for a fresh outpouring of that spirit of unity, culture of life from conception to natural death, among all of our uh, Christian Catholic leaders, we pray to the Lord. Lord Through Lord. Mary, Lord, hear our prayer. For all public officials, uh, those voting for them and those being called to public office, especially Catholics, that they may promote the culture of life, from conception to natural death, religious freedom, marriage between a man and woman for the whole of life, open to children. And we pray for this, especially for Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, through Mary, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in special need right now, those who are in distress, who are struggling with family relationships, who feel abandoned under a cross, we pray to the Lord. Through Mary, Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, for all of our unspoken intentions that we bring here. And for all those uh, who've kept, uh, who've participated in Novena to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, um, for greater trust in her intercession, for each of us, and in a special way for Kathleen Thompson, the repose of her soul and the consolation of her family, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers which we make in faith and with the help of Mary and Joseph, grant these petitions according to your will and pour out your Holy Spirit again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing number 242 in the Pew Missal. Sing of Mary, number 242. <laughs>
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory, the solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Santo. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Mightem Tua, Anunciamus Domine, et Tua, Resurrectionem Confite Enon, Domine Elias. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Come, Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother and best disciple of Jesus, help us now. We invite you to help us listen and receive the words of your Son.
Lord Jesus, before we go, give each of us a word that will help our neighbor to help us to pray with that person today, tonight, tomorrow, this week. Something we feel or hear or smell or touch, dream, think, an emotion that goes through us that's not ours right now. Some feeling in a part of our body, maybe. Let us pray. Lord God, we have been nourished by the body and blood of your Son. May the wonders of your love strengthen us and help us to follow more faithfully the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to whose service we are dedicated. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for the blessing. The Father chose Mary to be the mother of his son. May he make you also her faithful children. Amen. God the Son was born of Mary and was obedient to her. May he grant you to love her as he did. Amen. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her and made her fruitful with the word. May he fill you also with the divine presence. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Did anybody get a feeling or anything, a thought or an image, something, you hear something that wasn't, you know, normally, that wasn't there before and then it just kind of, kind of went, popped its head up and went back? Because that's a hint now to be on the lookout, that could look like somebody just recently had a pain in their elbow, uh, but, and then somebody else last week he said, Father, were you, were you using incense at Mass? I said, no. He said, I smelled incense. I said, well, we didn't use it, so that's probably Jesus, you know, helping you with the sense of smell. Now that, you, now that you're alert to that, now be on the lookout for somebody in the next few days that has something to do with their nose or, you know, not being able to smell like long COVID or something like that or just something with the word incense. And then just ask them, would you like some prayer and see what they say? And even if you just prayed like, you know, one Hail Mary with them or in the name of Jesus, you know, olfactory nerves be healed. Somebody might go away completely or very noticeably different and feeling closer to God. So I just, um, if there's somebody here tonight that's got a headache on the right side or something with uh, the right side of your face, and especially somebody who just, just does not can't break through to um, just full of discouragement about, you know, uh, being already loved by the Lord and working from his love. <clears throat> um, we just want to, in your name, Lord Jesus, release peace in that person or those person's hearts right now. Help them to trust your word, to hear again your voice that you spoke to them at baptism. This is my beloved son and whom daughter in whom I am well pleased. 
And in your name, Lord Jesus, any uh, right side of the face, pain, a headache, especially on the right side, be healed in the name of Jesus tonight, tomorrow. And please give everybody here any healing dreams that will help them also to help a neighbor. <clears throat> St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Joseph, patron of Carmel and uh, patron of families, pray for us. St. Joseph, most chaste and most just, pray for us. And St. Joseph, terror of demons and protector of the whole church. Plus Carmeli, vitis florigera, splendor celi, virgo pubertera, singularis, mater vitis, sed virit vestira, Also, I forgot to mention sorry, that there's a Love and Responsibility film by John Paul II, his, his play that he wrote, The Jeweler Shop, that's being offered in the hall here um, tonight for any young people, uh, young adults. 